Hello everybody, welcome back to LA Word Devotional. My name is Adam. I just want to thank you for spending your time with me. You know, in the next 10 minutes, you could have, you know, read a book, read the newspaper, or anything else, but you chose to spend it with me as we look into God's word and his truth and how his his holy divine word still pertains and applies to our lives because God's word is still alive and active. Hebrews 4.12, and this is what L.A. stands for. It's living and active. It's what it's based on, the devotion is based on. Today, if you notice, it's uh, it's titled Mirror, Mirror. And uh, I want to start off with that, just for some fact that, you know, a lot of times when you get ready for school, work, or out on a date, or whatever it may be, you know, you look at yourself. You're like, ah, oh, dude, has my hair right? Is my face? Is my, is my makeup? You know, does the shirt look good? You know, whatever it may be, right? And then, when you're about to leave, sometimes you you go back and you kind of look at yourself again, whatever else, just to see if you, you you look that appropriate or presentable or just you look that certain way. You just want to make sure, right? Well, it kind of reminds me when I was thinking about looking at the mirror yesterday. You know, God brought me to this passage a couple of days ago, and I've just been kind of hashing over it, just kind of looking over it and so forth. And I will look in the book of James. This is the brother of Jesus. And we're going to be looking at James chapter 1, 22 through 25. And then we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John. If we have time, we'll be looking at the Gospel of Luke. That they all pertain together. And if you will, follow along with me. It's in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. It says, Do not merely listen to the Word. The Word means talking about the Scriptures, God's Holy Word. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says very simplistic it's a it's a commandment here anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like I think that's pretty much self-explanatory so you know a lot of times you can actually kind of categorize this and James could be speaking to those of you all that are categorized as Sunday Christians and that, that, you know, that might be harsh. But the reality is, there's so many of us, that, so many people that we know, and some of us might even be living like this now. We go Sunday, we maybe go Wednesday, we might hear somebody, but we don't do God's Word. We hear it, it goes in one ear and out the other, and we don't apply it or do what God has us to do. Okay? So James is speaking directly to us. This is a powerful truth. I mean, this is no, no light issue here. He says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But, verse 25, I like that word, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Now, I want you to go back. You can do this afterwards. And I want you to count how many times the word is mentioned of of looks or you know, whatever your version is uh, looks or intents or stares or glances or you know uh, but all of those words is a different meaning to what verse 25 verse 25 says but the man who looks intently okay all the other words and all the other passages basically meant to, to stare to glance to, to turn back and say ooh, you know like like a mirror you know what do I look like Verse 25, it says, But the man who looks intently into the perfect law, perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what it has heard, but doing it, it will be blessed in what he does. Okay, that perfect law is God's word. It's the scriptures itself, because it's a mirror of reflection of our own heart. Okay, now get this. That word looks... Hebrew, it means to examine. It means to study, to pour over... Um, to to distinctly constantly be in it it's kind of like a word picture of a maybe a scientist who takes a microscope and, and looks at the germs or something more in depth more in detail and he looks and he finds out all these things okay you look at that word and that's exactly what james is talking about for us to pour over god's word to look intently to study not just to pass over it or hear somebody and not do it it's the same connotation it's the same implication when you look in the gospel of john chapter 20 uh verse 5 it says um talking about peter when they ran to the tomb 
He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. You know, it's the other disciple that ran in front of Peter. It says, he bent over and looked at his strip. Looked again. So he carefully examined what, what was going on, what took place. She's not here. But again, he's pouring over the evidence that is there. He's pouring over the evidence. He's, he's examining the room, what's going on. And that's exactly the implication that needs to happen in our lives. That we need to pour over God's word. We need to study. We need to examine God's scriptures. Not just be hearers, but to be doers of God's word. Why? Because one of the things is to be obedient, but the, the most important thing is that he blesses us. Now, I could do a, I could do a whole week on, on, on specific blessings, but to simplify it, it's physical and spiritual blessings that God pours out when we're obedient to him. And then if you look into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46 through 49, it says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do what I say. So, so many, so many people, they say, oh yeah, 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 I'm a follower of Christ, I'm a Christian. But yet they don't abide nor do what Christ has asked us to do. So Jesus is asking the people, he's speaking to, he says, why do you call me Lord? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So you claim to this, but and in essence, you, you just listen to it like you don't do what I've asked. You don't know me. And then he goes on and he says, to, to further this, to simplify this even more, he goes like this. Verse 47, I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug deep, deep, dug deep. Do you get this? Dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. Couldn't, couldn't shake it. Metaphorically, you know, it says, Jesus, Jesus is implying here, saying, look, when you place your life and trust in me and you abide in me, when you follow me, when you're walking with me, when you're examined, when you're pouring over my word, what I've given to you, myself, when difficulties, when life faces, when all else fails, I'm there. Your hope, you can rest your hope and your security in me. I'm still living. I'm still breathing. I will take you through those difficulties. I will take you through some circumstances. I will take you through some obstacles. Because there will always be hope in me. Okay? But, verse 49. That's just to simplify. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The movement, the torrent struck that house. The collapse, the destruction was, was, was complete. So it's basically, you know, it, if anybody has ever built a house, looked at plans, or anything, blueprints like that, you would know that you want to have a strong foundation for your house to be built upon, or it's going to crumble. Well, that foundation itself is Jesus Christ. And that's what he's saying, man. Especially, I want to speak to all you all who, who are followers, that they claim that you're followers of Jesus, but you're not, you're not abiding. You're not hearing you're not doing the words that Jesus has asked us to do. And so here's my two questions real quick. Number one, how does the term Sunday Christian illustrate James's point in verses 20 through 24 in James chapter 1? How does the term Sunday Christian illustrate James's point on verses 22 through 24? Second question is this, in what area in your life could you do a better job at applying God's word rather than merely listening to it. My name is Adam, and I, again, I just want to thank you for spending just these mere moments in this quick devotion, which, man, we could have probably poured over and over probably for a several weeks. But today, why don't you go before God and say, you know what, I'm tired of being just a mere listener. Lord, I want your blessing. I want, because I love you, because I'm consumed by you, I want to do what you've asked me to do. I want to be a doer of your word. And I don't want to forget that when I look at your word, that I come back, I don't, I don't want to be like the mirror mirror, but I want to know exactly what I'm going for, exactly what I look for, because it's your word that penetrates my heart. That's my prayer to you. That's my encouragement to you. This is LA Word Devotional. Thanks for watching.